Jesus name we pray Heavenly Father we are grateful to be in your presence God we are desiring that you will give us vibrant men and women children that love God children that are spiritually zealous energetic to serve the Lord children that are ready to go for ministry father we want to you to bring revival to the church we want to see the good old days again we want to see converts that are zealous looking for Jesus wishing to do more for Jesus a father we saw or we are seeing that some weaknesses have entered in among your children and they cannot do much for you because of their change of vision because of some weaknesses remove those weaknesses from them in Jesus name Pour your revival upon their lives and let them rise up as army in this end time. In Jesus' name we pray. Can be seated. In our Bible study, we are considering reasons for your spiritual poverty and bankruptcy. Reason for your spiritual poverty and bankruptcy. Back to this scripture, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. The Bible says If thou faint in the day of adversity thy strength is small If thou faint in the day of adversity thy strength is small that is what the word says many live in spiritual weakness and lack spiritual vigor and vibrancy others look zealous but lack inner strength and cannot stand challenges and adverse conditions. Yes, that challenge their faith. They cry and behave like babes. They cannot be depended upon. What accounts for this spiritual weakness and Failures. We are, we are looking for the children of God that are zealous, active, that by seeing them, you will say, Thou art the man. By watching their activity, you will see young David in them. You will see goodly Samuel in them. 
or already mature mean, you will see apostleship in them. You will see people zealous for, for God in evangelism, in the world, and in shepherding. Then, as a minister, as a pastor, you will jubilate. I have hope for tomorrow. This church will continue even better. Even if I die. But that promise is looking faint in our day. What actually is the reason? You will see a crowd of people. Surely the Lord's anointed is among them. You come in there looking for who is the Lord's anointed. Your case gets like a man that stands on top of a mountain and looks down the valley and looks uh, and sees forests of trees thinking they are standing together but when he descends from the valley he does not see the forest he saw that each tree is not really standing close to another so it is not really forest you see the people, you come in to know who are there that can be leaders. There can be coordinators. There can be pastors, preachers. You, have, you look around. You are not finding. Who is there among them, among the women, that is promising that she would do the work of a good pastor's wife. Born again, zealous, child of God, free from Satanism, prayerful, righteous and holy. You come and be checking like a blind man looking for where his staff is to arrive at them. Why? That's why I'm giving this message. Reasons for your spiritual poverty and bankruptcy. The reason is because of the poverty, spiritual poverty in the church. In the church. There is, the church is lacking quality people who have given themselves to the Lord. The church is lacking that. Many churches have brass in the temple since the gold have been removed by the enemy forces. They now replace them with brass, utensils of brass, equipment of brass, instruments of brass, not gold, because the gold has been affected by the enemy. What I'm saying, Satan has affected many youths. Satan has affected many in the church. Adults, grown up, mature ones. Satan has affected many. Let them gather in mass. Go and check among them. Where are the people from 40 to 60, 65, which are still strong that can lead the church? 
you will find that it's mostly youths who are still struggling with life who have not yet settled with life many who have not married have not even gotten real jobs where are these others that have settled with life that are serving Jesus that have released themselves for Christ where are these others mature 45 years old to 60 65 where are they the enemy has removed them the enemy has removed them they are somewhere now God is not focused God is not hunted for yes that is the church's spiritual poverty and bankruptcy many that come to church you see them come but some other things have busied them up they carry other visions you won't see them regularly in the church we are looking for people to be in prayer warriors people given to prayer that will cast out demons that will intercede for the church where are they they don't have energy in them for that their mind is not looking for that money 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 the enemy has used this a lot to frustrate the church has used this a lot people are looking for earthly advancement they want to excel success success everybody's thinking of success so but what about the kingdom what about the poverty that has stricken the church poverty because we can't find our people we can't find the spiritual people what about it's disturbing me where are the young ladies for this our brethren to marry is it because of the teaching on earrings on palming wearing trousers no that's the word of God and there must be people to believe oh the church is not doing evangelism because of spiritual poverty and bankruptcy in some quarters you'll be looking for where the young men to marry these ladies who have come to Christ the church actually is in pain and ministers like me are in pain because if these men don't marry can they keep themselves tomorrow what about the temptations of the devil if these women are not married how will it be can they endure how many will endure of course the very spiritual will endure in a way so we should take this matter seriously spiritual poverty and bankruptcy bankruptcy is still the same you don't have to pay you have debts to set to you don't have the money you are declared bankrupt you can't produce you can't help the situation you can't redeem yourself in the matter but what reasons account for this bring it to your life why are you spiritually 
poor. Where are you fainting? Where are you lacking the spirit of God, the strength of God, the zeal of God, commitment to the living God? Where is service failing in your hand? Where is it that your attention is not there? Why are you not making converts? All this while you have not made a convert. Why? Where are you scanty in the church? Where do you really come to church? Why is your prayer life now falling? What cut down your prayer life? That when you stand praying, fly can remain in your body. When you stand praying, your thoughts wander because there's no focus. Have you imagined why? There are many cases to settle in prayer, but you cannot settle them. You are bankrupt. You are bankrupt. And I'm talking to ministers too. Bankrupt. They don't have fresh messages to preach. They don't know what to do. Spiritually bankrupt. Why do we allow that? Please, let God help. Let us pray on this matter. Let's labor. Let's revive. Let's revive ourselves. Let's revive one another. Satan is working hard. Satan is working hard because he knows the days are getting over. And he wants to deliver people to hell. He wants to deliver whole church to hell. He wants to deliver the minister. He wants to deliver young men and young women to hell. And they are working hard. His demons are walking restless. The agents are increasing. Should darkness swallow up your life? If thou faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Little challenges you faint is because your strength has been you have never given attention to increased strength you have never labored you are not laboring you did not you do not bother to improve yourself to increase strength and that is why there's spiritual dryness there's spiritual poverty there's spiritual bankruptcy. God, bring back your people. Now, Solomon is going to tell us a story. Could it be pro, pro, a, a, a parable? Or a real life story. The whole thing looks like a real life story. In Proverbs. Proverbs. Chapter 24. Verse 30 to 34. I went by the field of the slothful. And by the vineyard of a man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and needles had covered the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered considered it well I looked upon it and I received 
instruction. Yet, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveled, and thy want as an armed man. Let's go back to that scripture, verse 30. Solomon is saying, he went by the farmland of a lazy man. He looked at the plantation of the man that does not have understanding. And when he looked at it, he saw that it was overgrown with tons the sharp grass that can pierce through a person and needles had covered the face bush had covered the face of that farm you can't see the crop again even the trees you can't see them standing here and there because they are inside bush and the stone wall thereof was broken down. The farm was fenced against animals, against attackers, even thieves. But now, because he does not go to that farm, his attention is not in that farm to keep it up to repair he does he did the the man did not have maintenance policy idea culture over his property the stones the walls of stones got broken down it shows this man was somebody reasonable before it shows this man began well he collapsed on the way he became careless on the way he he resigned on the way because see a man that could even fence his farm with stones to secure it from those that would break, break through to protect it from animals that would go to devour it but the stone wall is broken down. Then when Solomon saw that type, this man's farm, he said, he stood there and watched it and was wondering what happened. What actually happened to this man that this goodly place now has no significance? This farm has no meaning again. It's abandoned. He said he considered it very well. He took time to think through. He came to the reason. Yes, I received instruction. Maybe God gave him. God told him why it happened or maybe he really thought it out by checking here and there what was it he was speaking i'm sure he was nodding his head yet a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands to sleep so shall thy poverty come as one that traveled the man that travels from home takes the, the money he needs for the journey every time he spends it there's no replacement the money will be reducing until he will start lacking if he delays in his journey your poverty will come as one that traveled and I want as an armed man. The soldier cannot carry all the water he needs. 
He cannot carry all the food he needs. He carries sufficient. But as the war delays, he will begin to be in want of water. He will begin to be in want of food. That is how Solomon concluded over that man. Are you the man? You started this Christian life well. You had a good vision of this Christian life. But what struck, what struck at you? What happened to you that you are the way you are now? No strength. That even when you are threatened, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. There is no strength. The Spirit of God had gone. What happened to you? What brought your Christian life to the point you can't cast out devils again? You can't pray. You sit down to pray all the time. Not because you are sick. But the appetite of prayer is gone. You pray. Devil pushes you away and pass. Because you are blocking his way. Because your prayer lacks power. To resist the devil. What caused it? Reasons for spiritual poverty and bankruptcy. Number one. What did he say about that man? Verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful. The man went into slothfulness. What is slothfulness? It is indetermination. Procrastination. Loss of vision. Lack of vision. Laziness. Towards required action. Even when one knows the value of the action. I take it. Slothfulness is indetermination procrastination laziness towards required action even when one knows the value of that action did you not know the value of prayer do you not know the value of prayer do you not know the value of studying the word do you not know the value of going out for evangelism do you not know the value of attending meetings but you're undetermined you procrastinate till next time you are lazy the slothful man delays to do the required thing to enjoy the real benefit of hunting and bringing animals home. Wow! is too lazy to complete it. Look at it in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 9. Proverbs Chapter 18, verse 9. He also that is slothful in his walk is brother to him that is a great waster. <laughs> you are given spiritual assignment to this spiritually slothful, is going to waste it. You are giving a church to this spiritually slothful man, he will waste it. You are giving money to this spiritual to this slothful man, he will waste your money. 
You are paying a spiritually slothful man's salary. You are wasting your money. He will not have the time. Procrastination, indetermination, laziness will keep him from anything meaningful. Slothfulness. Slothfulness. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27, we, why would the church move forward when it is in the hand of slothful, lazy people? Why can a chapter do well when it is in the hand of a slothful, lazy chapter leader? Why can a zone do well when it is in the hand of a slothful leader, lazy, indeterminate, that has lost the vision of God? He can't do it. In Proverbs chapter 12, I read verse 27. The Bible tells us, yeah, saying, the slothful man rusted not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. The slothful man does not rust because you got the animal with the hair of the body. You got it in hunting. But to complete it, give, the slothful man can get a convert but will never follow him up. He can never follow him up. The slothful man will buy Christian books. You see, go to his house. They are like these books. CD doesn't listen to them. Doesn't read them. Sl too lazy. That determination to be somebody great for God, to be somebody use useful for God, that made him to buy those materials, the determination has diminished he doesn't read them he's a minister doesn't read our books this assignment that we give he's not doing them he's failing he has so many reasons why he won't pray he's too lazy to do it Yes. I will do it tomorrow. No, I, in fact, when I rise up on one day, all these hours that I've never met, I will finish it. The voice of the slothful. Procrastination. Yes. You will not do it. He does not read the books. He buys actually, but does not listen to the tapes. Because he does not want to labor, he suffers. He suffers. He can't find revival. He will be asking people to pray for him. You'll be surprised you're praying for somebody, even to say amen. He's not, he cannot even say it. You are praying for somebody. Say amen now. It's too slothful, too lazy to say amen. Have you reached that point that you spend your day without Jesus? Hi! You began well. And we are waiting for you to join us in this walk. We are waiting for you to go over there for us. We are seeing you earlier. But the Lord has rejected him. We say that is the man. But the Lord said no. Nothing is in him. And actually nothing is in you. Because you are not laboring. You refuse to labor. So how can virtuous words come out of your mouth? How can divine wisdom operate in your life? How can you have the power to challenge Satan? Go and look around. 
to see whether you find people that are able to challenge the devil cast out the devil they are fearful people you say we should go and do what yes somebody has fallen down there let's go and handle it uh, bro I uh, actually bro get another person because you have not have strength yes to desire spiritual excellence in life is good that you desire spiritual excellence is in ministry is good but desire is not enough you must arise and walk it out rise and walk it out you want your faith to increase faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God but do you hear is it this word of God that you put and are busy moving up and down telling story and answering phone call that will give you spiritual strength you don't know that God is marking you an angel is there taking record of you is it not reward God is a rewarder what how did you listen to that message that you think that God will reward you with strength how did you do that prayer that you think God will reward you with strength is it this sleepy prayer that God should reward you with answer to prayer you're disturbing us because we need much from you you are like the fig tree Jesus saw it with leaves and came there happily he might find some fruits because he was hungry but saw nothing he was so hungry that he cursed it so you deceived me you will give testimony I thought that it is a real thing you're a real person it's a lie you can't justify your testimony Can you see slothfulness, laziness, procrastination, indecision? Yes. Indecision. In Proverbs chapter 21, verse 25. Proverbs 21, verse 25. The Bible says the desire of the slothful killeth him for he his hands refuse to labor the desire of the slothful kills him because God wants you to cooperate with him cooperate with him the God of the world by labor Paul the Apostle said with my hands I have fed myself and those that are with me in ministry have you become greater than Paul worked more than Paul more valuable to God than Paul that God should just be giving you without work some of these people unit leaders chapter leaders coordinators have ample time to do many other profiting business to get to eat to get to keep the church but this slothfulness this laziness makes them to misinterpret scripture I am a pastor and God says I should eat where I am laboring is it the time the farmer is planting his crop that he is to eat from farm is it at the time you are raising up a church that you should eat from eat a church of three members a church of 10 15 30 that you should not start eating from eat or is it when the farmer has gotten them to fruition to harvest time 
that he can now eat from it. Is it, is it not when your church is, is big enough, the offering can both solve church problem and remain enough for you that you can now begin to thank God and make the church bless you. So, take it this way. Desire is not enough. You must arise and work it out. Many people desire to, be, to preach, to be given preaching. To you in the public like this, give me preaching. Have you committed yourself to God for it? When David was committed in the forest, did not God bring him to town and exalt him and exalt him? What have you done in the private? What, how much study have you done in the private? Because I had the vision to serve God well, as I was growing up, I spent much time with God in prayer, in study of the world, and in the discipline of righteousness and holiness. Yes, I did that. It's unknown to others. Unknown. But if somebody came nearer, he would know this man or this young, this youth has is committed to God, is gifted. In 1994, Pastor W.F. Komoye, the General Superintendent of Dipala Bible Church, came for Great Miracle Crusade in Jalingo, Taraba State, where I was working with the government. And there was occasion I, in the crusade, during the morning session, or during the uh, morning session, I was given a message to preach. Pastor W. was hearing the message when I was preaching. When he heard it, he told the state coordinator, which was Pastor Mikailu, who is with us now, that who is that person preaching? It's Pastor Paul Rika, tell him to see me. And when I saw him, he related with me, asked some few questions. That was maybe October 30th, 1994. Then in the Congress, International Congress in Lagos, he gave instruction that he sh they should interview me. He set up a committee to interview, interview me. And the, inter the committee interviewed me and gave him report. That man is sound. He said, I know. I know. And when I was to be posted to Binway State as a state overseer, he announced it publicly. He said, I have my man in Taraba State. So, a man's gift make it a way for him and bring it him before kings. You can. I was posted to being wasted. To pastor a church of 2,600 people in one congregation. This is God. Your private commitment will expose you. But we have people who want to preach to satisfy the flesh. Personal life, nothing is there. No labor. No labor, no study, no discipline, no private development. 
slothfulness all the way and that is the position the church is going now that's the position that's the position attention has gone for money and business attention has gone for extra hours attention has gone for overtime attention has gone to multiply things you do this job you move to this job you move to this money house of god is dry and we are in bankruptcy where are those people that well that are like me where are they you will not know you think that god did like that and brought a slot from unto you God just picked a thought, slothful man and gave it to you. And you are thinking we can not pick a slothful man. But when there is no gold, brass can be used in alternative. And that is not enough. Brethren, rise up and walk on yourself. Brother, raise up yourself, qualify yourself and let the Lord reveal you. The fruit that is ripe, when the mango tree is ripe, it falls down and says, I'm available for eating. Even if nobody touches it, it will fall down. The wind will cause it to fall and say, I'm available for eating. I'm looking for you. This work has just started. People didn't know holiness movement. They are now knowing holiness movement. They are coming. Because people want to go to heaven. They are coming. And we need workers to attend to them. Enemies also have heard that there is a movement that is giving Satan problems. Satan is posting them. We need men. We need women that will withstand them and fight them at the gate. Where are they? slothfulness have carried you we employ it you come and walk even in the church you are too lazy to read the bible you are too lazy to pray even walking in the church hearing our messages to even concentrate and give it attention your mind is not there you are thinking of money 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 can you see the situation Nehemiah came and called the people and said, do you know the distress that we are in? How the church lieth west. The enemy is mocking. Yes. That is it. The child has come to the bed, but there is no strength to push it out. We are at the time much people are needed but the people are not there the people are not there pray ye the lord of the harvest this is why you should join me to do that he may send laborers into his field not defiled people not corrupt people money mongers demonized people laborers those that can labor let the lord send them to holiness movement righteous people righteous women righteous men righteous youths righteous aged slothfulness the next thing the slothful man develops is fear Fear of harm. Fear of evil. He sees insecurity everywhere. And advises himself to remain indoor. He would not attend church. He would not attend church service. Night vigil. Special programs. He has reason. What is his reason? He said, a lion is outside and is in every street in the city. 
That's a slothful man. A lion. A lion is outside looking for him. A lion is outside waiting for him. That's why he cannot go. The slothful man says, a lion is outside. With all this commitment to God, you say witches and wizards are in the church. If I come and lead powerful prayer now, they will hunt after me. Christian? Go for that vigil. Armed robbers are waiting on the streets. If I go out now, they will kidnap me. Come for conference. In my workplace, they said, because of this period, over time we pay a lot. And I'm looking for money to do this and do so. I want to use this time to get more money. Slothful man. And that is how you're gone. Your name is not in the book of life. The Lord doesn't consider you as a soldier in the army of the Lord. Is it not a thing which should weep for you? Should we not weep for you? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Who can protect you actually? It is not in a man that liveth to direct his steps, to protect himself. He shall surely give his angels charge over you and they shall bear you with all with their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. It's God that will protect. Why are you so fearful that you lose, you have now lost your Christianity? You have now lost your fervency. Why are you so fearful? Slothfulness. Yes. Yeah. So, what, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 24 from verse 30. I went by the, the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. That's another thing. This man doesn't have understanding. He's void of it. He's empty. He doesn't have understanding. A man void of understanding does not consider the future implication of his present action or inaction. It does not. The Bible tells us be strong in the Lord because of what is waiting for you. Put on the whole armor of God because of what is waiting for you. That is it. For we wrestle. The wrestlers are waiting. Wrestlemen will fight. The enemies are waiting. Not against flesh and blood. It's not a physical fight. But against principalities and powers. against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places where you live there are evil rulers that control the atmosphere and they know where you are and will do their best 
to put you under control. I'm telling you a real story. In one of these places we lived, we had a neighbor. And we treated this neighbor well, lived well with this neighbor. In a dream, the neighbor came to my wife and said, I and you will fight to know who has the controlling power over this territory. Uh -uh. <laughs> what do you mean? No, we're going to fight. To know who has the controlling power over this territory. The neighbor had been a we had been in witchcraft. And the presence, our presence, thank God she cannot even come to compete with me. Our presence is a problem. And my wife was dealing with her freely as a lover. Pastor's wife. But I said, no, we'll fight. And what do you mean? Before you know it, she struck at her with a power of witchcraft. She said, stop that, stop that. She struck at her again. Uh -uh. I said, stop that. She, st she got hold of her and got her well beaten in the dream. Who has the controlling power? <laughs> In that society, who has it? I say, who has it? And Jesus has given it to her daughter. Amen? Amen? Amen. From that time, the, the, the power of the women there, everything is under. And what I'm saying is, they will try you if you are not spiritual. Witches will control you. And you, they will regulate your prayers, regulate everything that it does not affect people anymore. It doesn't affect act, your, their, their own activity. It's because of the prayers. It's because of the spiritual performance that, has, that is disturbing them. Power, they know that power has come here. We will humble that power. So that we leave. And if they come and see you, weak you, big but weak, big but weak, everybody say it. Big but weak. Big but empty. They will control you, your Christianity will not prosper. We wrestle. But the man that is void of this understanding will never walk to fill himself with power. Will never take time to pray, to fast, to read scripture, discipline himself in righteousness. He will never do it because he's void of understanding. That's why you collapse. You didn't know the fight waiting for you. Many people on they have died even straight. They didn't know death was waiting for them. They didn't know the evil day was waiting for them. So they were careless. You are not aware a day has been set to clear you off. And as a result, you have collapsed in prayer. You are not studying anymore. Money is all you are looking for now. You are too sick to pray. You are too sick to get anything of God into you. To put on the armor of God is because you, are, you lack understanding of the battle that is ahead of you. That's why Solomon is saying it is the vineyard of a man that lacketh understanding. That does not know the plans of tomorrow. That does not know that the walls of his uh, the, the fence the, the, the fence of his farm will collapse that grass can grow and destroy his crop he doesn't know this he doesn't know this brother do you know it at all if you know will you go and sit down 
if you know will you lie down sleep until it is eight o'clock sleep anytime no prayer sleep prayer is not part of your early morning duty in the night you come tired and sleepy do you really know that your evil day is waiting for you yes i went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man that is void of understanding and lo it was grown over with tons and, t- and needles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down that's your life because you lack spiritual understanding yes you are not aware that your spiritual strength gained through commitment to god to the study of the world prayer to believers fellowship and god's service is what keeps you from satan's onslaught to cease from this commitment for any reason takes you to the high risks takes you to high risks in your life proverbs 21 verse 16 proverbs 21 16 the man that wandered out of the the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead i read it again the man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead i will read it the third time proverbs 21 verse 16. the woman that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead that's it I'm not saying this thing. I'm not saying this thing to discourage you, but to tell you, you don't. You are risking your life. Use the remaining energy to rise. Why are you risking your life? All these people who left the church is—is it not because of the slothfulness in their lives? Wanting of understanding, they didn't treat it. They never knew. I go and ask them. I never thought I could leave holiness movement. But where did you leave? Has the battle of life finished? Or have the battles of life finished? But where did you leave? Is the understanding that you lack of the evil day just outside the fence of holiness movement? you lack that understanding yes very terrible i'm saying this thing because i want you and i'm trying to see how do i get you we're we're looking for people how do i have a person like you that is collapsing we can't use you you could have been a leader you could have done this you could have done that but seeing you no strength is in you That's why I'm talking. Go and prune yourself. Sharpen yourself. Yes. This, the one that lacketh understanding. He that commit adultery, that commits adultery with a woman, lacketh understanding. Can you see the same thing? Do you know that it will affect you badly? If David knew incest will enter his house, who is Uriah's, Uriah's wife? What's her beauty? If David knew, David knew that his children will kill one another, who is, what is the beauty? What is inside the body of, of Uriah's wife? That he will go into immorality and bring damage to his house if david knew that absalom will sleep with his concubines what is inside Uri- uriah's wife is because he lacked understanding he 
he that wanders away from the congregation or from from the way of understanding shall abide in the congregation of the dead some some <laughs> This cheap immorality that Delilah is giving you, cheap sex, do you know that you won't see again? Your eyes, your two eyes, shall be blocked up forcefully. You cannot even imagine the pain of that. How long will it take you to be delivered out of the pain of eyes blocked out? Who is Delilah? Samson, you're going to, the Spirit of God in your life will live. The Spirit of God in your life will live. For you cannot contend with an immoral man. Samson, you are a star in the world you will lose your position you will lose your ministry samson you are honored by both man and animals because of your strength do you remember that the lion bowed you smote the lion and every man hey they, they feared you are feared by both man and animals but you will now become a fool grinding in the millstone because of adultery, immorality, fornication. Come, brother, this house of God you have abandoned, do you know the implication of it in your life? This assignment they gave to you in the house of God, God gave it. You abandoned. You are treating it as dung. Do you know the implication that you will face in your tomorrow? Not talk about hellfire that is still, is still too far. I mean in this life. Didn't the scripture say, or doesn't the scripture say, had the prince as the, as the prince of this world known what it means by crucifying the son of God killing the son of God on the cross they would have never touched him they would have never touched him if you know the implication of this backsliding you are doing the, the privileges you are, loo you are losing now <clears throat> you will hate backsliding you will, whoever is provoking you to it, man or woman, wife or husband, you will never yield to it. It's because you lack understanding that you're reacting to things like that. You are reacting. Somebody says, ah, uh, a chapter leader has offended me. I will not go to that chapter. I won't go to that chapter again. Uh, 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 this pastor has offended me. I will never listen to him again. This one, this one. <laughs> he that lacketh understanding. The soul that wanders away from the path of understanding shall un abide in the congregation of the dead. Where people die except mercy and you are traced steps are retraced except grace as your steps are retraced yes look at it in proverbs chapter 6 proverbs verse 23 to 32 proverbs chapter 6 23 for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the ways of life to keep thee from the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman lost not after her beauty in thine heart 
Now that let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a warish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon what cause and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the wretch of a man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he, be, will he rest content. Though thou givest many gifts. If you have understanding. Then keep yourself from immorality. If you have understanding. A young man. I had a story in the University of Abuja. Young, goodly man that had kept himself from women was being enticed by a woman, a married woman for that matter. Eh, please teach me this subject. Teach me, teach me. And would come to his house. But this innocent boy would do it innocently. But he didn't know. He lacked understanding that you don't carry a woman to yourself in a room here is your bed here is your woman in a secluded place don't try it this day the woman came and read, waited until it was evening and Satan, either Satan sent rain, or rain is raining naturally, but it rained in the evening. So she cannot go out. And it rained long. So she said, uh, we just manage here, since it's rain has taken over the place. And the magnet walked that night. That innocent boy committed immorality with that woman. What's the implication? He got HIV AIDS. He wandered from the path of understanding. He wandered from the path of understanding. This is the effect. Yes. This is the effect. Now, check the vineyard. The vineyard of such a man. Proverbs chapter 24. Verse 30 to 34. Proverbs 24. And he said, I went by the field of the slothful. And by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all, it was all grown over with thorns and needles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down mm. can you see what really happened it was the farm was overgrown with thorns the slothful and lazy Christian produces a lifestyle of tongues. He is hurtful in life, in relationship, and in activities. He is hurtful in ways. His ways have no grace in them. They are not salted with salt. Because that which would have given him good character is not getting it again. When the vegetation is not getting rain, it dries. You see it shrink. 
the Christian is shrinked. It's not fresh because it's not getting its supply. No word, no prayer. A little thing will touch him. Anger will take over his life. Anger, lust will come. That's why you're saying, I, I, how can in the church, are they not hearing this message? Why do they commit immorality? Are they praying? Are they studying the world? Do they take time to pray? Do they come to church? Are they, are they disciplined before God? Why wouldn't this thing grow? Why wouldn't they grow? If there's no movement in the house, here and there, grass will grow in the house. That is it. That is how the farm, beautiful farm, well, beautiful garden, spoiled. And needles covered the face of it. The glory of God is, is covered up by the darkness of sin. No peace, friendliness, joy in the face of that person. Anger, sadness, sorrow, war. The spirit that gives joy is not there. The word of comfort that comes and pipes down is not there. He becomes a troublemaker. He becomes a troublemaker because you are slothful. You are not reading the Bible. You are not praying. You are not attending churches. You are not far and there. The grace of God is not in your life. The presence of God is not in your life. But see more. What happened? The stone wall is broken down. Divine security is removed. The stone wall that protected you, your protection is gone. You will have, you will have dreams. Terrible one. If you complain that witches and wizards are attacking you, you are right. You are right. Because your protection is no more there. It is the world that protected you. It's the name of Jesus that protected you. Faith in Christ protected you. And faith comes by hearing and the word, hearing the word of God. It comes by the intake of the word. But the word is no more there. And as a result, there's no more faith. How will your prayer life be? Empty prayer. Noisy gong. You can come and be shouting, hey, 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 hey. noisy gong. Nothing is inside you. Because you are not, you have left God. You have left his world. So you will face it. Go and face them. Since you are not ready for me. Since I, you don't see me of value to give me time. You don't see me of any value. Your prayers are full of sleep. You have time. You have time for money. Everyone go and meet your God. Money has become your God now. Go and meet him. That is the problem. What other reasons? See a reason, another reason, but it stems up from, from slothfulness. Even from lack of understanding. Look at it in Proverbs chapter 24. Verse 32 to 34. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep so shall thy poverty come as one that traveled and thy want as an armed man remember what I told you spiritual poverty your physical sleep 
is causing spiritual poverty in your life because you are sleeping in excess. In fact, you, you love sleep. You love sleep. It's good to sleep, but don't sleep in excess. And don't love it. Because sleep will bring you to spiritual poverty. Sleep will bring you to spiritual poverty. Control your sleep. He that loveth sleep will come to poverty. In Jonah chapter 1 verse 6. Jonah chapter 1. Verse 6, the Bible says, So the shipmaster came to him and said on him, What meanest thou, meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. You dream a bad dream. You rise up instead of praying and battling to save your soul, to save the soul of somebody, to save your family. You say, oh. You know that perishing is coming on your way? The devil manifested himself, but sleep overcame you. You can't stand to save your life. You are always finding battles in the night. You can't wake up to face it sleep you love it you love it physical sleep cost that man turn that man's vineyard to vanity of, of help to him your physical sleep is affecting the ministry of god in your life it's affecting it many things are going wrong in the ministry your physical sleep it's affecting your family because the children are not before God in your intercession. You're not praying. Sleep, 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 sleep. That's the voice of a cow. And that is your voice in sleep. Very harmful. Very harmful. Remove it from your life. Vouch that sleep from today. You will not overcome me. You are doing great harm in my life. I will sleep but not beyond. There's time to sleep but there's time to wake and, and go into action. Everything has its own time. Don't give time for other things to sleep. So, awake sleeper. We're in danger. Many dangers come around you. Why do you spend time sleeping when there are dangers in your life, dangers in your family to settle in prayer, danger in the church as a minister? Why are you spending the time sleeping? He said, it's sleep that caused that man's problem. It is sleep. Yes. In Mark chapter 14 verse 37 to 39 mark chapter 14 verse 37 to 39 the bible says and he cometh and findeth them sleeping and said unto peter simon sleepest thou couldest not thou watch one hour even this one hour we gave for prayer here. One hour, 30 minutes for those who are leaders. Sleep will not allow some people to do it. Love of sleep will not allow some people to do it. The good days without even making one hour. Because of sleep. Sleep is down. And can you not watch with me one hour? Answer Jesus. Answer Jesus. What sleep? The damage sleep is doing. 
the damage sleep is doing you love sleep to the point that prayer devotion to God study of the Bible and inspired Christian literature are affected coming to church no I'm so tired let me sleep please if pastor asked for me tell him that I could not come brother sister we need you we want you God needs you today put away slothfulness from your life today think it through your thoughts keep you awake your thought will take you into desired action we're in the last days what do I do now I the Bible sends you to the ants Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 to verse 11 send to the ant to go and learn her ways go to the ant thou slogger slothful consider her ways and be wise please learn from the ants not even supervised it says who having no guide overseer or ruler the ants don't have any one of them directing them but they are personally committed to that which will give them food that which goes for saving for the evil day for raining season when rain shall cover many of their holes they have sufficient food on the ground provide her meat in the summer and gather it her food in the harvest how long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Everybody say today. Yeah. When I ask you a question, answer me. You hear? How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Say it very loud. How long will thou sleep? Destroying the Christian life. Precious life God gave you. We are waiting for you to, do, to dress up yourself. To raise up yourself for God. We are waiting for you to make yourself spiritual. That God may recommend you for a man's gift. Make it a way for him. We will thou arise out of thy sleep. If you don't do and go back now, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of your hands to sleep, your spiritual poverty shall come as one that traveled, and I one as an armed man, and you will end in hell. Because we have given you instruction. Rise up upon your feet. Today, as you are rising up, shout it. I said, today, shout it. Clear yourself from slug sluggishness. Clear yourself. Go back to the word of God. Go back. Wake up yourself. Think through. You will not sleep again. All this procrastinating indecision lack of determination it shall not be again 
we shall get the people we're looking for men and women young and old thank you the school of spirituality go back to the school of Christian spirituality the school of Christian spirituality. Go back to the school of ministerial spirituality. Thank you, Lord. Oh Lord, pour down revival. Oh Lord, pour down revival. Oh Lord, pour down revival. Jesus. Lord, we want your children to stand erect. We want your children to receive revival. We need them. We need them. We need them in evangelism. We need them. We need them to make them ministers of your gospel. We need them to help us. We need them to take over wherever the need is. We need both the men and the women. God, we need them women for marriage men for marriage to form a formidable family for christian life and ministry Revival, Pentecostal revival, we need it, Lord. Revival, Pentecostal revival, Jesus revival, Pentecostal revival, we need a revival, Pentecostal revival, revival. Pentecostal revival, Lord revival, Pentecostal revival, Jesus revival, Pentecostal revival, we need a revival, Pentecostal revival, we need it, Lord.
We need it, Lord. We need it, Lord. We need it, Lord. We need it, Lord. Awake! Awake! Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Send out revival. Send down thy Holy Ghost. My Jesus, we need revival. Father, we need the Holy Ghost. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. We pray thee. Yeah, tell him, tell him, tell him. Revival. Don't, don't go the same way. Don't go the same way. Tell God, tell God, tell God. Go and pray about it at home. Go and pray about it at home. Don't, don't, don't remain in the same way. Don't remain in the same way anymore. Pray about it. Pray about it. Receive revival. Receive it. Receive it. Wake up from the dust. Clean yourself. Move. Move. Raise up your hand. We want to pick you from the pit. We want to take you to the mountain. To serve our God. Oh, Jesus. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my
you purchased me with your blood you are my lord and my savior you left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin I believe, I believe. 